Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Tonight, we're going to take some member questions, look a little bit at the new Charles Savoy, and talk a little bit about uh, the Silver Eagles. So let's start out with Disney Dollars. And he asks, I've been checking out these various technical charts and was wondering if you could briefly discuss some of the different methods being used. Thanks for considering. And he gives this link to this so whaleclub.co. So if you go here, now I don't know if I'm looking at the same thing he was looking at because if you look here, you can see that these, it looks like people are just constantly posting charts here. You can see 21 minutes ago, 28 minutes ago. So they're always throwing up cryptocurrency charts. So what are all these things? Well, there's a lot of things. There's there's Fibonacci series. There are Elliott Wave series, swing ratios. Um, this one here, I haven't really seen anything like this one. It looks kind of like a Fibonacci sequence. A swing rule. Uh, a swing rule is it goes as much up as it does down. It finds something in the middle. That one's kind of similar. This one is kind of a descending pennant formation. You can see two trend lines there. And uh, you can see the main downtrend line and the uptrend line meet. And then it's rallying from there. So a lot of this stuff, it doesn't, it's very interesting looking back. You can see a lot of stuff looking back. But as far as predictive power, there really isn't a lot of predictive power to this. a lot of this stuff. Here's another swing rule type chart. Uh, this one is a downtrend line looking for a breakout. Uh, this is kind of a head and shoulders top pattern formation. And so Bitcoin's kind of in a uh, downtrend right now. Now, I've showed you the coins that I'm kind of playing with right now. One is Florin coin. And again, the promise that I see in that coin is that there's going to be a message system, an uncensorable message system uh, that can be built on top of it. So I've been accumulating this coin. This is just a play wallet that I've got here that I showed you before. Another one's kind of interesting is this Zeit coin. And I've just been playing with this one. I got a million right now currently on Cripsy. The wallet's broken. So I have like 100 million or something like that of these coins. But I can't download them to this. And now I really want to download them because you can see uh, once my wallet caught up here, it uh, I, this had a million coins on it. And you can see I received 12,000 because it's actually mining. This is the proof of stake coin. So you go down here and you can see wallet is encrypted and currently minting. So it's actually minting coins for me. I just wish I had my 100 million here because instead of getting 12,000, uh, I would have gotten, what, a million? Uh, you do the math. So interesting stuff going on. Now, I think that we're, we're very, very close to some kind of bottom. This is one I like because this is what those coins are denominated in, is actually denominated in Litecoins. Now the reasons, another reason why I like Litecoins is because the Chinese love Litecoins. You can see they drove Litecoin from two bucks to 48 bucks. We're down 98%. And you can see that we're just kind of starting to, to turn up a little bit, maybe. Maybe the bottom is in. If you pull it closer, you know, go to the two hour. Uh, I bought a bunch of light coins to buy my other coins and you can see got a nice breakout here. Big move from 1.45 to 1. Point, actually two. So a pretty big move. But yeah, I think that light coins gonna probably start rallying. Bitcoin is falling off a little bit now, but it, it's pretty much, they have pretty much taken the stuffing out of most of these coins. Um, and so that's a good time to accumulate if you believe in the technology. As Jesse Livermore said, markets go down to the bottom and they sink like a dead man. And it takes a long time for those dead bodies to rise. Markets have to, they have to really be dead for a while. So you can see this is name coin. Here's another coin that probably isn't going away. This is a coin that's going to be based on DNS. And you can see that it's this is name coin US dollar. And it went all the way up to nine dollars for one of the coins. And where is it at right now? It's uh, 33 cents or something like that. So a lot of these markets are down a good 98 percent 
So if you think they're going to survive, uh, you might want to pick some of them up. Now you're going to have to be very knowledgeable about the wallets. You know, you're going to have to probably if you're a newbie, you don't know how to lock your wallet, encrypt it, and do all that stuff. You might want to just buy your coins and put them in cold storage or something like that. Um, if you're trading on the exchanges like I'm trading right now, like I mentioned, I'm trading on Cripsy and I have a hundred million co uh, Zite coins there. And right now the wallet's under maintenance, so I can't get them off. So if that exchange went bankrupt, my coins are gone. That's the risk you take. This is a new technology. It's very risky, but I don't think it's going away. Uh, next question is from Jay Random. With regards to that latest video, how come whenever you say the words Catholic priest, the word pedophile pops up in your mind? If they were on top of the pyramid, couldn't they have stopped the damage to their image? I think the Vatican is another shield for deeper evil. Well, in a sense, there's an association, but really, when you think about it, in my opinion, they've squelched most of that stuff. You've had some isolated lawsuits, but the church has pretty much been able to spin things as these are isolated individuals uh, who are no larger percentage of the population than the general population, and these are problems that we've dealt with, and you know, which obviously I don't believe is true. You have an anti-biblical position there of having not these men not being able to marry and of course forbidding to marry is something that you know is mar is a marker of false doctrine in the new testament but you know if you have these men and they're not married and it's just a recipe for disaster so i think that compared to the way things really are i think that it's been downplayed a very large amount and although it is in the in the public's general knowledge for the most part it's my opinion that it's been squelched uh, next question moss moon butler ted butler i'm being somewhat conservative saying 350 million ounces because i don't want people's heads to explode end quote it's interesting how people slip up sometimes in the most subtle ways why would ted butler be worried about how people receive his data well, I don't know. I've had some serious doubts about Ted Butler from the very beginning. Now, when I first started to part ways with Ted Butler was when Ted Butler got on the Bart Chilton bandwagon. And it just did not pass the smell test for me to think that there was a person on the inside who worked for the government that was actually a good guy. That just doesn't that doesn't work for me. I don't see how you could have a person standing against the power of all these people and be a good guy who actually is going to bring the truth out. My initial suspicion was that Bart Shulton was a way for the masses to be appeased, especially the GATA types, the silver conspiracy types, to basically give them, throw them a bone, give them some kind of hope about the government doing something about this criminal manipulation that we have. And, and these people are criminals. These people are pure evil. We're going to see that when we get into Charles Savoy. We're talking about they've caused the deaths of millions of people. So we're not talking about uh, people that are, you know, playing around, playing patsy. These are serious people. These are serious, dangerous, evil people. Now, to think that these people would let somebody in their midst who's a good guy and he's not going to be bumped off or run out of town on a rail or something, it just doesn't pass the smell test. And, it, and that's how it turned out. Uh, so what does that say about Ted Butler? Is Ted Butler just kind of another Bart Chilton, just always holding out hope that's never fulfilled? Now, you have to remember there's also another aspect with Ted Butler. There's kind of that Martin Armstrong aspect. If you know about Martin Armstrong, Martin Armstrong supposedly was a, a person who was an uh, had a lot of theories and 
uh, could predict things that only insiders would know. And, and then, of course, we know the government chased him down. He supposedly wanted his model. They wouldn't give it to them. They trumped up charges, locked him in prison. But ever since Martin Armstrong has come out of prison, there's certain things he won't talk about. One thing is the gold and silver manipulation. He absolutely will not talk about that. And he's always bashing gold. Won't even talk about silver. So what happened? Did the government tell Martin Armstrong, we'll let you out, but here's what you can say and here's what you can't say. Well, the reason I bring that up in regards to Ted Butler is Ted Butler was convicted on market manipulation way, way back in the day. Uh, CFTC, I think it was a CFTC investigation for uh, criminal manipulation of the futures markets. I don't know if m many people know that. Now, do we have a Martin Armstrong situation going on with Ted Butler? I don't know, but I definitely wonder sometimes. So that's my best guess. Last question from Dane Spriggle. Why do you think JP Morgan is hoarding the millions of ounces of physical silver now? Well, the first thing I'll say is that I don't know if they are. Um, now, the first thing I'd say on that, and I did some math, I, I'm not going to pull up the calculator and do the math, but I was trying to figure out what is the amount of physical silver that could break the bank. Because, you know, the, the blog has always been about physical silver stackers can break the power of the manipulators just by stacking silver. Now, I came up with a figure, a guesstimate figure of 500 million ounces per year. It was my estimate that if there could be stacking to the tune of 500 million ounces a year, that would finish the manipulation because what would happen is there'd be a war between the industrial demand and the investor demand and then the price would simply explode and they'd lose control. Now let's think about this figure of 500 million ounces. 500 million ounces is a million people buying 500 ounces in a year. So that's, uh, are you going to get, how much, that's a monster box. That's a million people buying a monster box. That's the kind of uh, picture I want you to think about. Now let's shift that a little bit and think about maybe 10 million. So that were 10 million, remember we're looking at a population of 7 billion people in the world, 10 million people only being uh, three percent of the U.S. population being a f just a tiny fraction of the world population. If you had 10 million people just buy 50 ounces of silver a year, that's the number, 500 million. Or let's say we had 100 million people. Uh, we've got a billion in China. So if 10 percent of the Chinese population bought just five ounces of silver a year, just the Chinese population just buying five ounces, it's game over if it was physical. So do I believe that 350 million ounces is there? I don't know. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if they didn't even have it. Now, another point that that gets to is the issue of China. Now we've seen where we've talked about the space or the space program, the flat earth stuff, the the conspiracy stuff, whatever stuff you want to talk about, the, a lot of the questions always come back, well, why didn't the Russians say anything? Why didn't the Chinese say anything? And I, th I think that we can safely guess at this point that there's a very large chance that the Chinese government, the U.S. government, the Russian government, all the rest of the governments are in it together. Now, it's clear that the Chinese could utterly uh, destroy this system if they wanted to. Um, now we're going to see here when we look at Charles Savoy that they would have very good reason. They could simply accumulate that 500 million ounces of silver and it'd be nothing. Uh, it lit would literally be a rounding error of their trade deficit, but they're clearly not doing it. It seems that their major operation is in gold and not in silver. So that's my best explanation. I don't really know. We're, we're going to wait and see. And eventually we're going to find out what happens. Now, before I get to the Charles Savoy, I want to look at this uh, Bix Weir. This is the Silver Eagle rationing ends at just the right time. And uh, there was an announcement. Now, you know that the Silver Eagles have been in what they term 
uh, allocation. This is their term. An allocation is really just another term for rationing. And Vic says, with today's announcement from the U.S. minutes off to the races on the Silver Eagles just at the right time, we're pleased to announce that Effective Monday, June 1st, 2015, we will no longer be allocating American Eagle Silver Bullion Coins. Authorized purchases may purchase as many American Silver Eagle Bullion Coins as they desire. Really? Because <laughs> we know that they did increase the the number of silver ounces coming in by, I think there was an extra 30 million or something. But as many? Could the Chinese buy a billion Silver Eagles? I don't think so. And that wouldn't be a lot of money either. Those of you who have followed my work know that I've been fighting for the original intent and purpose of the U.S. Eagle program to be upheld by the U.S. Mint and the U.S. Treasury. I'm not going to read this, but if you remember, what happened was that the, they had, by law, been required to mint as many as demand required. They weren't really legally allowed to do allocation, but as Bix points out, they changed the law in 2010 and gave the U.S. Treasury Secretary sole discretion on whether or not to suspend the production of eagles. So they changed that rule, uh, but now they're changing back to unlimited. And of course, that could change back again. What does that mean? I don't know. Some have speculated J.P. Morgan is accumulating silver eagles. Maybe. I would say that if J.P. Morgan is buying physical silver eagles then they are counting on a doomsday scenario. That would be scary if that's the case. So let's get over to the latest from Charles Savoy. This is Silver Squelchers number 12, and Charles Savoy is the granddaddy of silver conspiracy theories. We're just going to read a few pages here just to show you that the pure evil of these people, and Charles Savoy has documented it, more than anybody else has. Number 12, Silver Squelchers. If the globalists had to abandon all goals except one, it would be to keep smothering silver. Take 32 seconds to hear what should be the Pilgrim's theme music. I wish I could Vulcan mind meld the rest of the Silver Squelchers series to you. If you want to know about the society, you must read the profiles. I can't put the details into a teacup. It's an Olympic-sized swimming pool and will only cover roughly 12% of the members because the rest are presently non-documentable due to this being the only major globalist group refusing to release a roster. What is to follow are the most detailed profiles of current members available anywhere, period. As, and as your information workhorse, you get it for free. Do not post any of these in a pay-to-read status. There's no such permission. It must be read as widely as possible, and free access encourages more readership. Additionally, major portions of the fair use doctrine are accommodated in this manner, whereas by charging, problems may be encountered. Mostly the reason for no lawsuits in these matters is the society's strong desire to maintain its astonishingly, astonishingly low profile, which is a bizarre mismatch with the collective power of its members. I intend to forward one installment of this series every Friday a.m. to cooperating sites. If you find the details lengthy, consider that it may have taken me ten times longer to locate and organize them. No one will work remotely as hard to read these as I have to generate them. Please ask your congressman to subpoena the current roster of these worthy gentlemen. No audit of the Federal Reserve System could possibly be complete without their roster. This needs to be stated at the start. The Pilgrim Society and the ancestors of those who founded it are the gold and silver price suppressors and the ones who shoved the whole world off metallic money and forced the world into fake currencies by which the issuers are enriched and everyone downstream is harmed by inflation. Naturally, foreign governments, including China and Russia, would take advantage of the price suppression in its later stages once they became able to do so and accumulate gold. Notice he doesn't say silver. The Pilgrim Society and ancestors of members very demonstrably is documented in the Silver Steelers to have drained China of most of the silver it historically earned in the trade with Europe and England over a centuries-long period of trade over the Silk Road and Ocean Transport. This silver recapture happened because first by means of 
the opium business in which these lofty British gentlemen forced Chinese, sometimes at gunpoint, to become opium addicts by the tens of millions and allowed silver only in repayment. Secondly, the crime of 1873 affected not only the United States, but China also, where it caused millions of deaths. Surprisingly, the New York Times Pilgrim Society owned and controlled a lot of guest commentary on February 3, 1931, page 24, by John Brisbane Walker, who founded Cosmopolitan Magazine in 1899. Here was some of his remarks cited The Sun Catches on Fire, released in 2007. Demonetization of silver by England was originally worked by a few powerful financiers who saw an opportunity to more than double the value of their personal fortunes as silver could be demonetized in England, Germany, and the United States. Backed by those who held mortgages on property throughout the world and who saw in demonetization the opportunity to double the value of their loans, the most powerful system of propaganda ever organized was put in operation and involved the reiteration by propagandists unhesitating in their methods by the exercise of every conceivable form of political and financial pressure. England's action was one of the combination among a few powerful individuals who were willing to wreck the world if they could double their private fortunes. There was an immense fall in prices and, the extre and extreme suffering resulted. As if they had been a row of bricks, banks all over the United States fell down. Immediately, those who had been living from hand to mouth began to struggle for existence. Depredations occurred. I personally saw a procession of starving workmen, estimated to be 10,000 in number, tramping along the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal, begging for food ready to work for a wage that would barely keep body and soul together. There were four batteries of artillery sent down from Washington to protect the houses and property of the Baltimore and Ohio Railway. Men committed suicide by the thousand. Everywhere hopelessness and despair settled over the country. Pressure was exerted by banks upon all who refused to accept England's single gold standard. The effect on India and China will never be known in their fullest horror. The immediate deprecation, depreciation of their only stock of money, silver, stopped trade and starved whole provinces. It caused millions of deaths. The final silver drainage blow against China by these Anglo-American conspirators in the city of London and on Wall Street was worked by the Silver Purchase Act of 1934. It drained so much more silver out of China that as of November 3, 1935, China was officially derailed off its centuries-old silver money system. See China's Empty Silver Vault, released in July of 2004 for details. And it goes on. It goes on 93 pages. So... That's Charles Savoy, the granddaddy of silver conspiracy theorists, and it's well worth reading. We always make sure that we pin that on the blog. Uh, it's unbelievable. We're talking about pure evil, and we're talking about these people who demonetize silver, and that's what we're up against. We're, it's David versus Goliath, and we don't have the Chinese on our side, I believe. So it's just a matter of stacking silver as much as we can. Eventually, I think the system's going to change. I would love to see it happen that there were enough silver stackers, whether it's five, 500 and a million ounces or 5 million and 100 ounces or whatever the numbers are that add up to break the power of these people. But I don't know if that's going to happen. It's very difficult to convince people to do that, and they just they seem to pursue every other thing to stop this pure evil that we're facing, but they don't see the answer that's right in front of their face, and that's uh, stacking silver. And we'll talk to you next time.